Hello everybody, this is Tim once again, here to do a review for a much better sequel to Friday 13th, Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. This is a much better movie than the sleazy Part 5. Um, it's my third favorite of the franchise thus far, after Part 4, 1 and 4 are my, two, uh, my top 2 so far. Uh, this film has a much more light-hearted kind of tone to it, and at the same time it's dark, though it still keeps up the darkness, but it has kind of more of a light-hearted playfulness to it, which I'm only, which I'm glad that this film is the only one in the franchise that kind of goes for this, and the rest of the films continue down the more dark path, except for Jason X, which goes for pretty much almost a complete comedy. Just the idea of Jason in space alone is a comedy to me. But, um, stay with this film here. This is a really good film, though. It's really well directed and has a lot of, uh, well put together scenes and really good scares in it. Uh, it, it, it is a really good film despite like it's more light hearted feel to it with the comedy in it and everything. It, gives, it just gives it a little bit too much of a light hearted feel for me. Um, Tom Matthews plays uh, Tommy Jarvis in this film taking over from the guy from the last movie John Shepard I believe was the actor's name. Um, Tom Matthews does fine in the film playing Tommy Jarvis. He doesn't have as many like uh, like bursting out crazy scenes and like going off and doing jujitsu moves or anything like that. He doesn't do that. You get one scene at the beginning where he gets mad and stabs Jason Corpse with like a like piece of a metal gate. But as far as like the going crazy and stuff like that, acting John Shepard from Part Five was better at that. I enjoyed him more at that. But Tom Matthews I like better than John Shepard. So other than that, I I like him fine. Uh, here's my copy of the film. Jason Lives, a little bit of 3D effect there, if you can see it, I don't know, a little bit of 3D effect there, it kind of hurts my eyes a little when I look at it, but it's fine, Evil Lives Forever, special features, commentary with the director, with cast and crew, Lost Tales from Camp Blood Part 6, The Crystal Lake Massacre Revisited Part 3, Jason Lives, The Making of, uh, Meeting Mr. Voorhees, uh, the original ending of the film, uh, Slash Scenes, original theatrical teaser trailer, here's the back in case anybody wants to see it, So yeah, this is a really good movie. It's much better than part five. I would honestly recommend watching one through four and then skipping five. Well, actually, I would say watch five. You know, if you're a fan, watch five. But if you're just like a casual moviegoer who just wants to watch some good Jason movies, watch one through four, skip five, go to six. You won't miss anything. The film, like for the story of the film, it picks up sometime after five. Tommy Jarvis is now like out of the institution. He's like normal now. Kind of got his stuff a little bit better under control. But he wants to make sure Jason is dead. So he's got his friend with him named Hawes. Um, so they go, they go to dig up Jason's grave to, uh, cremate him is what they're wanting to do so he can make, uh, get rid of his hallucinations forever because he'll, he'll know completely that Jason's, well, ashes, he's dead completely. There's no coming back for him. So he goes to dig up Jason, he digs up his grave, he starts pouring, uh, uh gasoline, well, he, he flies off on him and fucking, you know, has, like, starts having non-flashbacks Jason style. Or they seem like non flashbacks anyway. Starts uh, hearing, like, uh, reliving what happened to him in part four. Tommy Jarvis does. And he, he runs over there, flies off, rips off a gate post, starts stabbing it in Jason's body. That was entertaining. Uh, I would have liked more of this. Uh, John Shepard played it much better, though. The the scenes where Tommy acts crazy like that in part five. Like, I miss the jiu jitsu moves. I miss them. But, uh, so he stabs up Jason's corpse, stabs the metal pole down it, and goes to get the gasoline. Him and his friend are going to pour it on him and set his ass on fire and burn him to ashes. But lightning strikes the pole. <laughs> There's a storm coming in. Jason gets struck two or three times by the... Well, the lightning strikes the pole two or three times and zaps Jason back to life. So Jason comes back to life by lightning. Now, Jason has always been a supernatural-style character. But uh, there's not really any explanation given other than the fact he was always kind of a supernatural character to the reason he comes back to life from the lightning. But... It doesn't make sense so much in a logical way as it does in just like a uh, old universal style horror movie monster movie way, which I just love. So Jason comes back to life. Tommy takes the pole out of him. Uh, why he's burning with the pole in him, though, I don't, I don't know. He could still do that, but whatever. <laughs> so Tommy pulls the pole up out of him. Uh, of course, Jason comes alive, makes it up there, starts coming towards Tommy. Tommy pours the gas, slings the gasoline on him, going to set him on fire, then the rain kicks in. Uh, causes the match to go out. Uh, Hawes comes up behind him, hits him in the back of the head with a shovel. Jason turns around and fucking BAM! Fatalities him right through his uh, chest and comes out the other side with his heart in his hand. That was badass. I love that. Hawes' body falls down into the fucking uh, grave where uh, Jay falls into Jason's casket and it slams down on him. 
Uh, so Hawes' body is now in Jason's casket. Jason gets ready to go after Tommy, but Tommy makes it out of there. Uh, Tommy had brought Jason's ho uh, hockey mask with him. And uh, he fucking takes Tommy's gloves he had and takes uh, the hockey mask and puts it back on. And Tommy gets out of there and makes it into his truck, gets the fuck out of Dodge. So he gets away, and then you get the coolest fucking scene ever right here. The coolest scene ever. Where, uh, this is, I talk about the openings in these films and how cool they are. This opening right here is just fucking amazing. I love this. It's so cool. It goes with, like, the meta style of the film. Like, the self-awareness of the film. This is six movie in, so the director, uh, Tom McLaughlin, kind of figures that we kind of more in with the, the story and the character and everything now. And kind of the rules and stuff of these films thus far. Uh, or the rules that, uh, we think they have thus far. Because he kind of plays with him a little bit here. Like the nice girl still gets killed in the film. In probably the most brutal way in the film. But um. It, he Jason turns around. He's got like the metal post in his hand. And the fucking camera zooms in directly on his eyeball. And in, in his eyeball you see like a little Jason walk by and slash. Just like similar to James Bond. And those James Bond films. The open openings of those. And then it fucking just pops up with Friday the 13th. And then at the bottom of it, the machete slashes by and the blood is like oozing out and it says, Jason lives. That was awesome. That was literally cool as fuck. I love that opening. That alone is better than anything in part five. But, um, we get that. That's awesome. Tommy goes to the sheriff's station trying to tell him uh, what's going on. Of course, sheriff don't believe him. He throws him in a jail cell, locks him up. Nobody's going to believe a fucking killer came back from the dead. And he's going, he's like going around cutting up people at... Camp Crystal Lake as a super zombie. Of course, Camp Crystal Lake is now named Camp Forest Green because they want to dispel the negative publicity about the place to get people to come. So, you get in the seventh movie, it changes right back to Camp Crystal Lake, which is funny. But in this movie, it's called Camp Forest Green. You got, uh, as for other characters in the film, you got uh, the sheriff's daughter, Megan. This uh, I think the actress's name is Jennifer Cook. She's fine. She's cute. She's likable. She's really spunky, but not overly annoying. Uh, you got her in the film. You got other characters. Uh, you got the really nice girl uh, who like tries to comfort the the children in this film at the camp. Yes, we have children in this film at the camp. Uh, actually, have children in the in the summer camp, which is the first and only time in this franchise that that's happened. You got um you got this other guy. I think his name's Court. He's a fucking like really dumb guy. He wears like pants with jeans with holes in the knees. He's really goofy, but he's funny. Um, then you got uh. This other girl named we got a character named Sissy. She she's fine. She's just she's just kind of there. She had to find up the body count, but the actress does does fine with her. Um. So then you got Jason plays by C.J. Graham in this film, and he was like a former former Marine, and his training and stuff comes in handy really well. The characters played like like a force to not be fucked with in this film, similar to kind of the way he was in Part Four, except he moves more slowly here and doesn't have as much like fierceness behind him. I don't think. But he has more of like a, a soldier style of just like walking and stuff to like get to his targets and just plow through anything that might get in his way. Instead of just brutalizing everything. Uh, but uh, So he runs into these two counselors who are coming there to the camp. Uh, one of them gets out. You get a funny line here where uh, the woman who's driving wants to turn around. She's like, I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. I thought that was funny. She drives towards him, and uh, the fucking dude from Ghost, I believe his actor's name is Tony Goldwyn, uh, <laughs> he killed Patrick Swayze, so this is what he gets. He gets out of the vehicle, he threatens to shoot Jason and get him to move, because he's like, nobody wants to die, so he thinks he can scare him off. And he tries to shoot Jason, but Jason fucking stabs him with a metal pipe, or metal rod, and fucking <laughs> slings him straight up in the air over top of him like that. That was cool. Uh, he tries to kill the woman, the woman makes it out, Jason disappears, and she's wondering where he's at. Jason falls directly down behind her, and then fucking takes the metal rod and just slams it directly down on her face like that. And she, you can see, like, air bubbles coming up from this little, uh, mud hole, little puddle. And that was cool. That was a good death scene, I enjoyed that one. Uh, back at the camp, you got all the kids pretty much hanging out there, doing their, doing the same shit teenagers would do. Uh, that we've seen similar in other films, which is decent enough. You got a fucking badass scene in the movie where uh, the guy, Court, the funny guy, he's like goofy, but he's funny. He's like fucking uh, talking to these kids about Indian markers or something like that, and he's saying that uh, 
you got a kid who wants to catch up with his dad or something like that, or catch up with his catch up with his Indian dad, so he can learn how to shoot uh, shoot buffalo or kill buffalo or shoot a bow or something like that. And he sets up these sees these Indian markers that are set up by his dad. And that's how he finds him and he knocks them all down because he don't want the mother to catch up to him. <laughs> and one of the kids is like, "This is exciting as it gets. We're in big trouble." And then all once it cuts to Jason, a little humor like that, I don't mind really. Um, it's a little bit too on the nose for me, but I don't mind it too much. And you got the caretaker there who's like covering up Jason's body. He thinks Haas is, is Jason, and he doesn't know, realize that Jason's not in his grave still. So he's like covering up the body, putting the dirt back in the ground. And he, I don't like this joke here. He kind of looks directly towards the camera. I mean, directly at the camera. And he's like, some folks have a strange idea of entertainment. <laughs> that joke's too on the nose for me. That's just too too much for me. That That's too far for me. But, uh, you got these fucking paintballers are out in the woods paintballing, and two of them get shot, and they got put on these headbands that say dead on them. I thought that was funny because obviously they are going to die. Uh, Jason shows up and decapitates three of them in a fucking three way decapitation, and that was pretty cool. I think that's the only time you ever see that in these films. That was awesome. I like that. Jason kills one guy who's like fucking hacking a machete because he's mad. He's hacking some wood because he's mad. He got shot in the paintball game and lost and Jason fucking grabs him by the arm, slings his arm off, like slings him all the way to the fucking tree and he hits it face first and then he falls off and you see a fucking smiley face there. That was a little bit too goofy for me. I didn't enjoy that. But uh he like lifts up the machete and he's still got the dude's arm attached to it. I thought that was funny. And then the last paintballer guy gets killed off screen. You see his body later where he's like been sliced to pieces. That was entertaining. Like him chasing after him and the dude screaming and everything. That was alright. Even though you don't see the death, it's still fine. Uh, so you got Tommy Jarvis who's trying to tell the sheriff and the sheriff's deputy that Jason is alive, but they don't believe him. He even goes to the graveyard, tries to show him that Jason's grave was dug up, but of course it's been <laughs> reburied now, so nobody's gonna believe a fucking word he says. So then you get a scene where like the caretaker, the character's name is Martin, like looking towards the screen and going, "Does he think I'm a fart head?" Talking about Tommy Jarvis saying that he's got to dig him up to show him that it's not Jason in the grave, and he's like. Does he think I'm a fart head? And then it cuts to these kids going, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's still a little bit too silly for me and cheesy for me for, to be in a Jason film. Like comedy-wise, I don't need that lighthearted little camp goofy humor like that in a Jason film. That's me. Um, Jason wiping out the other characters. You got, uh, well, the guy Court again. He's like in an RV, like fucking his chick. And uh, they're, they're fucking like the... The power gets cut out, and you get a funny scene where they're like fucking in there, and Jason walks up and is looking at the RV, and he like kind of tilts his head like that, trying to, to see what's going on. Uh, Court gets out of the RV. Um, he's uh, they're trying to wonder why the what happened to the power. Uh, they decide to leave. He gets back into the RV. They fucking take off. <laughs> Jason's in the vehicle. He's cranking up the radio. He's fucking listening to Teenage Frankenstein. <laughs> Or an A-track player, maybe. I'm not for sure what it was. But he's listening to Teenage Frankenstein. And then uh, his woman gets killed. Uh, she gets pulled into the bathroom by Jason. Gets her head, like, slammed directly face first into the wall. <laughs> which was pretty cool. She gets her head crushed into it. And then, uh, of course, Jason comes out of there. And he can't hear Jason behind him because he's listening to Teenage Frankenstein too loud. Which, I don't blame him. I love the song, too. So, fuck it. He comes up behind him and he jerks out a knife. Stabs him right directly inside the head. And the RV, like, hits a fucking... He hits, hits something and completely flips over on the side in a really cool action scene that I'm not really used to seeing in these films other than part four, which has some decent, you know, action moments. This is the only other, this is the biggest action scene in any of the films, I think, which is really cool. And Jason just fucking knocks the door off of it and climbs up out of the top of it. And it's like standing on the top of it with smoke and everything and the whole thing's on fire. And it's like, that right there is a fucking poster shot, baby. Poster shot. That is badass. That's right there. So, excuse me. You're just a moment here. Sorry, my fucking legs were killing me. But, um, yeah, that's a poster shot. That's so fucking awesome. Uh, so then he's back at the camp. Jason's, um, well, Jason makes it to the camp now, forest green, and he's there, and he's gonna fucking, you know, finish off everybody else. And, uh, you get this woman who, like, thinks it's, uh, one of her friends playing pranks on her. She's, like, sticking her, getting towards the window, and Jason just fucking leaps in, grabs her, and pulls her out, and twists her head all the way around, and rips it completely off. You don't see him rip it off, but you can see him twist it all the way around, which is still entertaining. Um, so she's dead. And then, pretty much only leaves one girl left, I believe. And there's this little girl that keeps having nightmares named Nancy. I thought it was a thing for nightmare, a tribute thing to a nightmare after or a wink at it. But uh, it's not. It's just she's just named after the director's wife. But he, I already doesn't. 
He's, I heard he likes the idea though that people thought that he was creative but I, that he that he came up with that. But um, it's not though. It's just the name of his wife. But uh, anyway, so then she raises up after she's done comforting the little girl, and then fucking Jason's like standing directly like right at the window looking down at the little girl, and then raises his head up to look at her and as she's walking out of there like he's following her like from the windows and watching her at the same time. That's really creepy and cool. I really like that. So she makes it back to her uh, her cabin, and fucking Jason just jumps in and door slams. You don't get to see what happens, but you can hear all the noise and blood just, like, gushes at the window. He fucking throws her to the window, grabs her, and yanks her directly back in. That was that was so cool. I love that. You didn't get to see what happened, but it was so intense and played so well. I just fucking loved it. See, that's an example of good directing right there. That was cool. Letting your mind, you know, fill in the blanks. Meanwhile, back at the jail cell, Tommy Jarvis escapes. Uh, the character Megan, the sheriff's daughter, helps him escape. She decides to to help him, you know, stop Jason. They take off. You got a scene earlier in the film, which was pretty cool, where they were like speeding or something like that, trying to, or where she was trying to help Tommy, where she was picking him up, and they were speeding. And you got a goofy looking sign that says speeding with a question mark on it. That was another thing, a little bit too silly for me there. Some of the humor in here is just too silly for my taste for a Jason film. But uh, you got that there. But anyway, so she's going to help him, and she's, and he's read some occult books on like how to stop things that are brought back from the dead. So he wants to like put a chain around Jason's neck with a giant fucking boulder attached to it and jump him in, dump him in Crystal Lake. It's kind of like returning him back to his original resting place, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a supernatural thing or a physical thing. Is it just because the rock's so heavy, then why wouldn't Jason just break the chain and just be loose? Or is it because he's like spiritually bound there because that's where he died at? I'm not for sure, really. I mean, all the stuff I've seen Jason do in these films, and especially even in the later films, couldn't he just break the chain or just rip it off his neck? But I guess it might be him spiritually bound there, but it's not too clear. But um, anyway, so he wants to do that. So he's heading there, and so the sheriff gets some cops, and, and he's got some deputies with him, and they're heading there too. And so they make it there um, because... Uh, well, because they found the RV with the two of Megan's friends dead, so they're heading there to tell them what happened. So they're heading there, and uh, the cops get there first. One cop gets killed out on the dock. Fucking Jason throws a dart like directly at his face, and it hits him right in the forehead, and he falls down on a little boat, which was cool. And then it cuts to a dart bar, which is, again, a little, little silly, but I thought it was a lot harder humor. It didn't bother me too much. I kind of enjoyed it. So he was dead. The other cop... Uh, you get a scene where Jason's like bending down, looking at one, looking at the little girl who saw him, uh, who keeps seeing him through the, through the movie, and he's like bending down, looking at her, trying to like study her, and that was a, that's mildly decent scene. He doesn't like, it's cool having little kids in the movie because it's kind of like maybe he's gonna kill him, maybe he won't. So that's mildly entertaining. But uh, the cops show up, so he gets distracted and leaves to go check the cops. And you get, a, I don't know why the fuck she's out running around in the middle of the night though. If she knows Jason's out there, why is she like running around? But whatever. I would probably be hid at that age. But uh, she pops out of some bushes, and the, the cop's like, what are you doing out here? And she's like, there's a scary man out here. And he's like, what scary man? And fucking Jason pops out. And he shoots him a couple times, which is really cool. And you see the bullets, like, come out of his back. Or see, like, wounds popping out of his back, like, with the smoke coming out, which is pretty cool. He comes towards him, grabs him, like, by the, right by the fucking head, and squishes his skull. <laughs> crushes his skull, which is cool. Not as cool, mind you, as the fucking eyeball jumping out towards the screen in part three, but still pretty fucking cool. Um, but, uh, so that's uh, two cops down, only one left. Uh, Sheriff Garris is the character. I like this character. He's really entertaining. He fucking just makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> just some of the stuff he says to Tom Matthews. It's like, yeah, if I had you where I wanted you, they'd be pumping your ass full of, of formaldehyde. <laughs> stuff like that is funny. I really enjoy that. Sorry, once again, my fucking legs are killing me. Whew. Sorry, I guess my legs crossed up here and this kills my fucking legs like so bad. Or you know what, better yet, I'll just do it like this. Whew. Sorry. Just my fucking legs are killing me when I, sometimes when I, when I sit with them crossed for so long, they just start fucking aching so bad I can't stand it. But anyway. So, uh, oh, the, I almost forgot about one scene. Uh, earlier in the film, they had to add in, like more kills in the film after they finished it, so they test screened it and had to add in more kills. So they had to add in the scene with the paintballers and this scene right here. You got the you got the caretaker who's like walking through the woods, uh, Martin. He's like fucking drinking, throws his bottle up in there, and Jason catches it behind him. He turns around, Jason crushes the glass and like fucking stabs him directly in the neck. That was entertaining. 
Uh, you don't see too much blood. He falls down on the ground. You can kind of see the blood coming out of his neck a little bit, but you don't see too much of it, but still decent. Uh, this guy who's up there with his fiance, I believe it's his fiance, maybe his wife. He sees Jason like getting ready to cut him up with a machete. All at once, Jason's sitting over the machete. He just fucking flings around directly towards him like that, like he sees him. That was creepy. And he, uh, well, he obviously does see him, but that was creepy. So Jason starts moving towards him, and the dude's like trying to get on his bike to get the fuck out of there to head to the sheriff. And Jason comes up to him and fucking stabs it straight through both of them, double impalement. That was cool. Once again, double impalement. No problems there. So that took care of those two. Uh, now back to the ending here. Um, so Jason is there at the camp. He's going to fucking wipe out everybody. There's only one left is Sheriff Garris. But then Megan and uh, Tommy arrive there. Um, Sheriff Garris uh, runs into Jason, shoots him a couple times with a shotgun. But every single time he shoots him, Jason gets up quicker and quicker. It's kind of like his body's getting used to what's happening, which I thought was really cool. And again, much cooler than anything in Part 5. But uh, he gets up quicker and quicker. Um, and then he takes out a little gun and fucking shoots him in the head, which kind of slows him down a little bit. Or, gives, or at least... He's got kind of seems like kind of seems like his body's got to get used to that too, but uh, he rebounds from that obviously and keeps coming. The sheriff manages to hide. Jason can't find him, and Jason hears Megan hollering for her dad. So Jason decides to go after Megan. As he's leaving, Sheriff Garris says, "Fuck this shit! And you ain't taking my kid." He jumps Jason from behind, fucking starts kicking the shit out of him and jerks out a piece of wood and just like, slams it down on him and then fucking jerks out a rock and starts beating him in the face with it. Like this motherfucker ain't fucking around. He's going. He's going down. He's taking Jason with him. He gives him Jason like a, actually a pretty good fight. So he's beating Jason in the head and Jason fucking grabs him by the arms. This is one of my favorite kills right here. Jason fucking takes his whole body and pushes it completely back and snaps his back like that and folds him like a, something like, kind of like a pretzel or something. That was, that was fucking awesome. I love that kill to this day. It's one of the best kills I've ever seen in a horror, or in a slasher film, period. But, uh, so he's dead. But he went down like a fucking, like a badass, <laughs> so I don't mind. And I like this character too. So he's dead. So he starts going after Megan. He breaks in there to the, <coughs> sorry. He breaks in there to the cabin trying to lure her in there. But Zank, it seemed like he's going to attack the kids. Uh, he busts out of the side of the cabin. Megan is there. He's getting ready to kill Megan, getting ready to squish her head. Tommy's hollering at him. He's like, hey, Jason, it's me you won't remember. Which is kind of funny because Jason obviously remembers him because he's the one that fucking killed him in part four. Uh, so Jason's coming, coming down there after him, Jason's walking into the lake, which is a really cool image of just Jason going into the lake, and he gets lower and lower, like the lake gets higher and higher up on him, I mean, it takes him, it seems like it takes him a while though for it to go completely over his head, but it does eventually, and it's funny because uh, Tommy's like, come on maggot head, come on chicken shit, come on you pussy, <laughs> I just thought that fucking shit was funny, good dialogue there, it was hilarious, and of course Jason makes it down there, Tommy lights the, the lake on fire. Uh, he's got the chain going to try to put it around Jason's neck and bound him to the lake, or the, the lake floor. Uh, Jason jumps up out of the water, Jason's on fire, and he fucking fight with Tommy, and he just raises completely up and crushes completely down on top of the little boat like that, and breaks it in half and takes and Tommy down with him. Even uh, Tommy's managed to get the chain around his neck, though, and they're both there and fighting in the bottom of the water, or the bottom of the lake floor. Um... And Jason's like trying to choke the fucking shit out of him, and uh, he manages to choke him out. And you obviously, I, I never thought Tommy was dead. I mean, I thought there's a chance he might die, but I never thought he was really dead here. But uh, so uh, Megan decides to try to help him, so she goes and jumps into the water, trying to make it out there to save Tommy. She makes it to him, is trying to take him out of there. Jason's still alive, though, of course. I mean, uh. <laughs> I'm, well, not so much still alive, but he's not giving up yet, so he's not going to go down without a fight. So he grabs her by the leg and tries to pull her under to kill her, too. And uh, she grabs the fucking uh, end of the boat and tries to turn on the propeller and manages to get it on and hits him, like, in the side of the neck with it. It chips off part of his mask, and he really cool scene right here where his neck, like, completely snaps. That was fucking badass. I love that. Um, but she manages them after that. Jason is pretty much out from right there. I mean, he's done with right there. Um, and she manages to make it out of the lake with, uh, Tommy. Gives him mouth to mouth. Tommy's fine. He's like, finally, it's over. Jason's home. And I'm like, okay, it's over. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 Tommy, sure. Tell me another one there, buddy. But, uh, then it skips to, like, the next morning, and Jason's just, like, floating in the water. And he's obviously, and the camera, like, zooms in on his face, on his mask. And you see one of his eyes, like, open and move. And it's like, obviously, he's not dead. He's just kind of, like, trapped in the lake for right now, which 
it's kind of weird that the police um wouldn't just you know go look for his body in the lake and just get him out of there i mean what or maybe tommy didn't even bother telling the police the story maybe he just went into hiding and just got the fuck out of dodge i don't know but that's always been a little weird uh, especially by the time part seven happens you would figure that they would fucking found his body in the lake by now or something shit but uh but anyway that's a small gripe because it seems like it's just the next day when it shows him in the water or just the morning or whatever so maybe the police haven't even made it there yet or something i don't know but that was still a cool way to end it. This film is a four-star film of a possible four. The only thing that hurts it for me personally is the little comedy bits. And that's more of like me personally, what I, what kind of comedy I don't like. But uh, for other people, it might be okay. But to me, this is the third best film in the series thus far. I really enjoy it. And I haven't seen Part 7 in a long time. So I'm looking forward to seeing Part 7 and seeing how it holds up. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget, the original ending for this film actually involved the caretaker still being alive and involved Jason's father showing up. Which would have been really cool, and you find out Jason's father is actually the one that I believe paid not to have Jason's body cremated, and has been paying the caretaker to take care of his uh, take care of his fucking uh, tombstone and everything, and his take care of his grave, I guess. Um, that would have been cool seeing Mr. Voorhees there. That would have been really cool, and you kind of kind of get the idea that Jason's indestructibility and evil side came from Mr. Voorhees and actually not Mrs. Voorhees. Which would have been interesting and kind of cool to like present Mr. Voorhees as like the most, uh, one of the, like, uh, maybe the most evil out of the three, really, of the three Voorheeses that we've seen. Or at least second to Jason. Which that would have been cool. That would have been really cool. But I guess the, the, uh, the studio said, you know, fuck it, veto that shit out of here. Uh, <laughs> kind of like, because they would have had to follow it up in another film in part seven. And they thought that changing it up too much like that by adding in Jason's father would involve like changing it up and maybe getting away from the whole stock and like just slashing thing like they do at the camps like everybody likes so far or the camp like everybody's liked so far and they thought that we'd you know audience horror on it everybody always thinks horror audiences are too stupid just to understand and try new things and sometimes we do get overly angry at the films trying new things and stuff like that messing with our, our formulas we've started out with but i would fuck it i would have been open to it myself i would have enjoyed seeing mr Voorhees. the whole plot of the next movie wouldn't have had to revolve around him just him being there as like a secondary character would have been cool for me fuck but uh we got what we got and i'll see you guys again with fire 13th the new blood or uh, Jason versus Carrie, as a lot of fans like to call it. So I'll see you guys again with Friday the 13th, Part 7.